February is in the bags, so here are all the games that I completed in February. The very first game that I completed in February was Silent Hill The Short Message. This game was released and as soon as I saw it, I downloaded the free game and tried it out. This is kind of like PT meets the other Silent Hill game, Shattered Memories. It's got a little bit of combination of different things where you walk through and it looks like the same map every time. And you're basically a young woman named Anita and you get a text message from your friend Maya who is technically deceased and you're like, why am I getting messages from Maya? And it's asking me to go to the apartment that I used to grow up in. So you walk around, you are getting chased by a monster and you have to find things to make the next scene happen. So you have to look for stuff, different messages, hidden messages are hidden in the walls. You could be looking in a room and that's why it looks like PT, you'll go in the same room and it'll change, you'll walk away, go back to another area, walk that room, and it's a different room altogether. Um, I like the game. Reminder, it's free, so I wasn't expecting like a 10 hour game. Uh, I completed the game in like 2-3 hours. Uh, the animation is off on certain parts. It has FMV for some of the characters and they look amazing and then you look at Anita and it's like why didn't they just cast a real person and have that person be the model? It didn't make any sense to me. That was the, one of the gripes that I had was everything's amazing. Everything is beautiful. All the characters besides Anita are great. And then you get Anita and you're like, this kind of reminds me of Ascension, the other crappy Silent Hill thing. So you're like, hoo <laughs> So grateful it's free. It's a good game. Try it out if you have a PS5. And hopefully... Yeah, beat it in two, three hours. There's a lot of puzzles and different things like that, so enjoy. After that, I played Detective Pikachu Returns. This is the sequel to the 3DS game, and basically you are a young man who can hear Pikachu and all the other Pokemon, and you are trying to figure out when there's a scenario, it's kind of like Clue game, where you gotta find out who did it. So you go and you interview people that were in the area, plus all the people that were near the Pokemon, that had been attacked or hurt or the people that were sometimes it was like a thief stole something from them and you have to find out why they were there and what is going on. I like the game. It's a fun game. I will say though it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. I thought there was like going to be different modes. Basically even if you mess up you never really end the game. Like there's quick time events. If you don't hit the quick time it just like pushes the character back a couple feet and then you have to keep going and going. Like, I wish there was a part where it was like, you lost, you have to start over again. But I get it, it's a kid game, so I didn't expect much, but I expected at least like a harder mode. Hopefully next time they'll do that for the next game and just put like a harder mode so that you can actually have consequences for anything you can't do. But I enjoyed it. Uh, the only weird thing is the voice for Pikachu kind of threw me off. <laughs> I don't get it, I don't understand it, but I guess that's why they made it that way because the first movies for Pikachu were a lighter voice and this one just I was like what? The third game for the month was Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. I streamed the game. I love this. this is a classic. This is one of the first three games for Crash Bandicoot and basically he's back. Cortex is being annoying and you have to collect all the gems, all the crystals, all the fun stuff. It's the same thing like the first one, but it's a little easier. So if you are unable to finish Crash 1, you probably can finish Crash 2 because there's a lot more leeway as far as like the jumping mechanics and different things like that. The levels are not as hard. And also there's a lot more chase levels. So if you're really into that, it's like you're getting chased by a polar bear or different things and to that effect, it's... Nice to change it up from the other game where you were just like platforming the whole time. So definitely try this out. It's a classic PS1 game. Do you like fighting games? Do you like Dungeons and Dragons? Then don't get this game. <laughs> I sounded like an infomercial for a second there, huh? Like, oh, it's a great game. It's not. Um, so basically this is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Iron and Blood, Warriors of Ravenloft. I found out about this game a while back and I was like, oh, there's a fighting game for Dungeons and Dragons? I'm so there. Let me pick it up. It was cheap. It was like around $20. So if you're trying to find a funny game 
that could be humorous. I, I would recommend this, but if you're expecting a good fighting game, don't bother with this. So basically what it is, is it says that it's got a campaign mode, a story mode, but in reality there is no campaign mode. It's just basically you pick four characters of there's a good side and a bad side. And if you pick whatever side you pick, you have to choose from them. And each character has either like a fighter, a rogue, a, a wizard, or whatever they are. You got to figure it out. So you go in and you are choosing from that. But the funny thing is you have to keep battling over and over and over and over again. And I'm not exaggerating. So each character has about three to four lives and you have four characters. And so what you have to do is you have to beat each character three to four times. And you have four characters that have three to four times that could survive. And if they are destroyed three or four times, then they're out. And basically it's like Battleship. You have so many ships and you have to keep trying to hit them. And then eventually you run out of ships and then you move on to the next one. So this is kind of like in the style of Soul Calibur meets Battle Arena Tushinden. Um, it's basically got like hit moves where you have power moves and it leaves you open to have them hit you. But if you knock them out, you could hit them against the barrier and then they fall down and you keep knocking them out. Basically, it's a button masher. At the end of the day, if you keep getting them to the barrier and you just knock them and you bounce them back, it's kind of like Tekken a little bit too. Where if you bounce them, then you can just keep hitting them. <laughs> and I figured that out and kind of cheesed a couple times on the fights because I was getting bored. So enjoy the game for what it is, but I will not pay anything more than 20 bucks for it. So if you find this in the wild and you see it for like 50 bucks, tell them it's a horrible fighting game. <laughs> don't drop the price. Don't, don't charge 50 for this. After that, I played a game called Love Choice. And this is an indie game that is three games in one. So basically each game is centered around love. You have a couple and you see their story progress from whatever it is. The first story, it doesn't match the second and third story. So each one has a different couple. And one of the games is kind of like a point and click. The other one is kind of like um, a mixture of like a, like a walking simulator and stuff like that. And then the third one is like a puzzle game where you have to find what is going on in that little like comic book style scene. You have to click on it, match it to the other side. So I enjoy the game. Um, I did platinum this one because it was funny to see the different endings. So for the next story to open up and unlock, you have to get all the endings from the first story and vice versa for the second and third. To unlock the next one, you have to get all the story endings. And I enjoyed it. It's a cute little story for each one. Um, it is on sale right now. So if you want to pick it up, definitely try it out. But I do recommend that if you're not into narrative driven games, don't try it because it's more point and click and puzzle game than it is to do with anything else. So I recommend it if you like these types of games. After that, I played a game that was also on sale, but I've heard lots of great things from all of the community who have already played it and it's called Greets. This is a game where you're a young woman who suddenly loses her voice and has to find it. So you have to each world go through and pick up another color, collect each color and the world gets more vibrant as you go along. I really enjoyed this. I had fun with the red level, which is kind of like, looks like Mars or a moon where it's all desert. And then each color brings out the next thing and then you get all the way to yellow. And there's little creatures that you find along the way in each round and you can utilize them. And also there was a part that scared the crap out of me. I didn't even realize I was going to have this. I thought it was going to be like a cute little narrative game where you, it's kind of like Journey. Where you think like, oh, I'm just going to go through with this little character and I'm going to run around. And all of a sudden you just see like this big, massive creature who is black and it has like ichor and stuff like that. And it's like running around trying to catch you. And it turns from a bird to like... <laughs> some type of monster each way through, like a mana ray or something like that. And you're like, oh snap, I'm gonna die. And so you have to figure out the puzzle as you're going through. It's an environmental kind of type of game. And I had a great time with this. I recommend it to anybody who has not tried Grease, which I think is a very few people. It's one of those games where you are going to be pleasantly surprised by a lot of stuff. In It lets you explore. It doesn't just like handhold you and guide you around. It's like, here, figure out what you need to do 
And it's not that difficult. It's not a game where you're going to be freaking out and you'll be frustrated. You're going to go, oh, okay. It took me a minute, but I figured it out. So I recommend this one as well. The seventh game that I played was a licensed Sonic game that I was surprised to find. And I saw a couple people had it on their list for games that they completed or finished from last year. And it's The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. This is another game that's kind of like point and click light where it's kind of like also clue and you are sent an invitation to be going to one of the characters' birthday parties and you're going to be on a train and you're going to go through and it's kind of like a dinner and a show kind of type of thing where you're going to be engulfed in uh, somebody's going to be hurt or attacked or whatever is happening and then you get ready and you're starting your day and you're like, I'm going to work here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to have fun. And then all of a sudden, sadly, Sonic is on the ground and you're like, what the hell's going on? Is he really hurt? What's happening? He won't wake up. And then everybody's like, oh no, somebody did something. We have to figure out who hurt or killed Sonic and we have to move through the story. And each part of the train has different characters and you have to interview them, figure it out. And that's why I said it's kind of like Clue as well. And you have to say who done it at the very end. And if you are not correct, you have to try again. And I think it gives you only so many tries before it stops you. Because what was good about it is it gives you enough narrative to figure it out. But it also doesn't handhold you to where you're like, oh, this is way too easy. I'm I'm going to figure it out in five seconds. I do like all the characters and their char like they have like different like motivations and stuff like that as to why they lied or why they're here and what they're doing. And so... You have to find out if their lie is tied to this or if it's tied to something else completely that they're embarrassed about. And I had a great time with that as well. So definitely recommend it because it's a free game. Just like Silent Hill, the short message, it's free. It's on PC. It's on Steam. Go get it. Play it. It's a great game. I played a game that I just don't know how to describe it. It's called Indie Apocalypse, and it is a game that was so weird. <laughs> Basically, it's kind of like uh, Avenue Q, the musical, where it throws everything that is supposed to be like a cartoony, like, kid vibe and makes it adult-oriented as far as you're going to see the bad side of all of the world. And so you're a young man who wants to be a game developer, game publisher, programmer, and so he wants to work somewhere in the video game industry, and he goes to school only to be thrown out of the school and now he has to face the real world and what is he going to do? He doesn't know. So you go and you see his story unfold. I kid you not when I will say that this game is very graphic, very gory, and also very, very triggering if you're not one of the type of people that wants to deal with the real world and you want to play a game that's not going to show you all that. Don't play this game. It's a game that is... I was shocked by a lot of this stuff. And I'm, a, I'm not the type of person that gets shocked very easily. I watch a lot of horror films and different things like that. I'm like, what the hell did they just name that character? Oh, you did. You named that character that. Okay, so it's a game also that has a lot of mini games that are not very explained well to the point where you're like, I need a minute. What's going on with this? I don't understand this. So if you're getting frustrated very easily, you might want to back off and play another game. It has a lot of Easter eggs. It's got a lot of stuff from the video game industry in there. So there's games that you'll be like, oh, this is Tapper. Oh, this is E.T. Oh, this is based off of this game, that game. And you're going to go in and you're going to be like, oh, crap. Okay. So you, if you don't know these old games, you don't know how to play them, you're not into them, don't play this game for sure. But if you like classic games like Tapper and different things like that, you're going to enjoy this game and you're going to have a fun time with it. Uh, it took me maybe three hours to beat the game because I got frustrated and stopped at a certain point. So definitely try this one out. Then I played an N64 game, which has two different titles, depending on if you're in Japan or if you're in the States. And in Japan, it's called Puzzle Bobble 64. In the States, it's called Bust a Move 99. And this is kind of like a few other games that I have played, like uh, Kirby Avalanche or different like Puyo Puyo or Tetris battlers where you face a character like a computer and you have to basically like put three colors together and destroy it and knock it down and then when you get some to fall you make them go over to their side so I had a great time with this I like bust to move I things like this kind of game I had a fun time with it as far as it did give you a little bit of a challenge and it didn't destroy your spirit to where you're like I can't beat this game 
So definitely recommend it if you have an N64. I don't think it's that expensive. Try it out. The very last game that I completed was a game that I've been trying to finish for 10 plus years when I realized you can finish this game. I thought it was one of those games that were endless like Tetris, but there is an ending to each game in the NES field. I just don't know how many levels it was kind of thing. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, it's 20 because I can't remember who finished it. It was a couple of people in the community. If you know who it is, put in the comments down below who has finished it before. And if it is you, just say, hey, I've completed Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario is a game that uh, I thought was endless when I was growing up and I would just play it for a little bit, have a good time, get up to about 14 or 15 and then stop. And lately I've been playing a lot of Tetris, Puyo Puyo, different battlers, like all the ones that I have in my games I beat list. And I could not for the life of me get to a certain point and then I either panic or do a stupid mistake and create a mess is what I call it. And then I would just, I would lose. So... I decided one time just to just try it because I got frustrated with another game. I can't remember which one I was getting frustrated with. And I put that game down and then I tried this. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how far I can get. And I could not believe I had gotten a... We know that point where like, I think I could do this. I think today is the day. And I just kept going and going and going. And all of a sudden I just went, I'm almost there. And then when you get to the very last level and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm half of the board done. I think I could do this. I keep going. And I did. And then I saw the congratulations screen. I was like... I was ecstatic. I was so happy to see that you could get to the very end and complete Dr. Mario. So to everybody in the community who has not done it, you can do it. Just practice, get better at it, play Tetris, play different things. And once you beat one of them, you're going to keep going and go through and beat the other ones. So go for it. And there you have it, everybody. I completed 10 games for this month, which brings my total to 17 for the year so far. Let me know. How was your month? Did you complete any games that surprised you? Let me know in the comments below and I might try to add that to the list of games I completed for the year. Hope you have a great rest of your day. If you're new, consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, and if you are liking the content, please give it a like before you roll out so that it helps the algorithm. I'll catch you next time. Bye everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal She's here, she's playing games. Linda the gamer gal. She's here, she's playing games too.